Hi, Nigel here with The Drive Wire, and this is the 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness. Interesting name because the Outback in Australia is somewhat of a wilderness. So it's a bit like calling the Ford Explorer the Ford Explorer Adventurer. But Subaru had its reasons. And essentially, it looks like an Outback with some body armor. You'll notice here that it's got a lot of black plastic cladding all around it in the form of protection, which continues into the front. You also get these Subaru Wilderness badges. There's another one on the other side, there's one at the back, show you that it is in fact a wilderness model. And then Subaru fits these uh, Yokohama Geolanders all-terrain tires. They're not bad, we took it off-road. We'll show you that footage later on, um, but these work pretty well. For pretty obvious reasons, the ground clearance has increased from 8.7 inches on the standard car to 9.5 inches, which is pretty good. Half an inch less than uh, uh, the Wranglers, probably more than any other car-based SUV wagon uh, that I've ever driven. On top of that, they've added a skid plate at the front for some protection against rocks. So that increased ground clearance helps with your breakover angle. And then at the rear, your departure angles have increased to 23.6. The front's 21.2 or so. Uh, avoids hitting any particular objects when you're uh, off-roading, which is kind of nice. So this one has a tow rating of 3,500 pounds, but even better news for those of you that like to camp, this roof rack here will hold up 200 pounds. If the car's not moving, support up to 700 pounds. So you can definitely pitch your roof up tent without fear of being eaten by a bear. So here at the back, as with all Outbacks, the cargo space is very generous. On this particular model, you get the automatic tailgate control plus a lock button. Inside here, you get about 35.6 cubic feet of space, but the seat stand, you get about 75. So it's pretty large inside. This one comes with the luggage cover and then underneath here, underneath this mat and cover, you get a proper Yokohama full-size tire in case you get a puncture out in the, in the middle of nowhere and then the back seats have this sort of plastic covering now, the seats are all this sort of plastic anyway so wipe clean any mess with dogs kids etc can easily be removed i sort of wish that the wheel uh, covers here were not of a material which uh, doesn't help with dog hairs and stuff like that it'd be nice if these were also uh, plastic covered but i'm sure you can get something after market to uh, take care of that you've got a couple of little cubbies in the side here and then nicely you can control the rear seats uh, put them down with this handle right here so utilities there it's an outback what do you expect in the back it's nice these seats are really nice and soft and i really don't mind the fact that they're covered in this 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 uh, vegan material as the way is to call plastic these days this seats all the way back but i still have a decent amount of room i got some headroom with a little bit of clearance so anybody taller would be able to get in here uh rear vents which my 2011 does not have sadly uh heated seats and then also you've got two usbs for power as well and then pull down the arm rest get two nice cup holders that don't get in your way of your arm here so you're not hitting any hard plastic at all and then uh, as well there's a little lever right here and you can recline yourself back and get into a nice comfortable spot for a longer trip it's nice back here it really is and these these seats are supremely comfortable i like it and comfort factor in the front now, I'm not going to go into the whole interior. I did that in my review of the 2021 Outback that we had a few months ago. So you can check that out at the end of the video. There'll be a link to it. But all in all, this place is a really nice place to be. Comfortable seats, heated, cooled. The only difference really is there's a beefed up version of the uh, off-road system that they have. In the Subaru, it's been slightly tinkered with to be a little bit more off-roady than the standard car. But other than that, everything else is pretty good. Plenty of storage space, cup holders, everything really where you need it to be for a Subaru. But check out my other review for more information on the interior at the front. So under this slightly mud splattered hood is the Subaru 2.4 liter four cylinder engine with 260 horsepower, 270 foot pounds of torque. So a little bit less horsepower than the outgoing six, but way more torque at much lower revs. And it's driven through a CVT that tries to mimic uh, an eight speed transmission. It does a pretty good job. It's still not my favorite. 
I wish it was a conventional transmission, but for, I think, cost and for fuel economy gains, uh, that's the way that they typically would go. This has an intercooler here for the turbo, uh, much like the WRX. In fact, this engine will be going into the new WRX. Once we get our hands on one, we will be testing it and putting out a review. So once you're moving, it doesn't feel a whole lot different to the standard Subaru Outback. You can't really tell that the ground clearance is a little bit higher. It's very smooth. Steering feels pretty much the same as in the other car. So not a whole lot of difference. Basically, it just drives like an Outback. Put your foot down. The turbo is pretty nice. Got lots of torque, decent amount of torque, low down. The CVT, on the other hand, is not, still not my favorite transmission. It does try to imitate an eight-speed standard transmission, but it doesn't quite work and it still feels a little sort of stretched out CVT-ish as it goes through the through the gears. It's definitely not my favorite but it definitely goes. I mean 0 to 60 on this car is around six seconds. It feels pretty quick. It also takes the turns pretty well. You know, for a high riding vehicle, if you compare it with something like, you know, a Jeep Wrangler with a 10 inch clearance, this is 9.5. This handles a hell of a lot better. But, you know, it should do, it's, it's based on the car. Engine makes that familiar sort of Subaru sound. It's not too noisy, not a lot of noise comes into the cabin, including sort of wind noise at higher speed. I'm also finding that the brakes are pretty damn good too. up this hill so there you can see it trying to simulate uh, a standard transmission instead of just holding the revs like like a RAV4 does it will it get to about 5500 and then change and change again but I think it could be programmed a little better but you might sacrifice a little bit of fuel economy if it was programmed that way and let's face it this is not a sports car one thing I don't like that much is the stop-start system. Some of them are really good. This one is a little abrupt and it does take a little bit longer than I would like to start the vehicle from a stoplight. So I tend to shut it off, but unfortunately every time you start the car, it comes back on again, which thankfully is not the same for the lane departure system. I've, able, I've been able to turn that off um, and it stays off. So every time you start the car, it remembers it and it shows you in the dash that it's off. Are these. So these Geolander tires, they're pretty good on-road. Um, it's a compromise. I mean, if you really wanted better off-road tires, then you might want to keep a second set of slightly larger tires for off-road, more off-road worthy. <clears throat> but these aren't bad for on-road use. They just look a little bit small um, versus the rest of the car. So you might want to get a size up anyway just to make them fill out the wheel arches a little bit better. And I can't fault the handling. It does, it does roll in the corners a little bit more, but you don't really feel it that much anyway. Uh, hustling along is, is a piece of cake. Behaves itself pretty well too. Even on the limit, ultimately it will understeer, but it's very well mannered. Even if you happen to take a turn at a little bit too high of a speed. So because I've been hammering it all week, I haven't been getting very good fuel economy, but I'm in the 20s as opposed to my 2011 Outback with the six cylinder engine, which I average about 18 in. So it's definitely an improvement. And this one, the wilderness will only come with this turbocharged engine. I wouldn't have anything less. The other engine is good, but it just doesn't, it just doesn't have the, the power to move this car around. And when you're off road and struggling in mud, dirt and sand, up some steep hills, you, you need that extra torque. When we took it off road, as ever, we try not to damage the vehicles. They're not ours, they're on loan. Um, but we took this and luckily it had been raining. And so 
even though it was dry on the day we did actually do this, we did found some huge mud water puddles to take it through. So we'll show you that footage shortly as well. And then we'll take it off road and show you how it did. Hi there, so we're on the off-road section of our test with the Subaru Outback Wilderness. We're going to take it down here to this uh, fairly steep hill and we're going to take it down and back up the other side. We'll do some footage and see how well this car does from an off-road perspective. Is it actually any good? How steep's that bit? Mine is 27. 27? Yeah. Nice. Oh, little slippage there. See it transferring power from one wheel to the other. Slipping a little bit. pretty good. A couple of bits of wheel spin, but it did a pretty good job. This thing just does it. It's not a problem. Clearance of nine and a half inches is, uh, we've only hit one rock so far, so that's a bonus. It does kind of feel like it's going to tip over. <laughs> I know it's not, but Back up the other side. Traction control kicking in. Struggling a little bit, but not a problem. Plus 22. 24. It's quite a steep grade. Yeah, this this uh, hill's not going to defeat this outback. Pretty damn good. And we made it. Good work, Subaru. So we're going to take the Subaru Outback Wilderness up this hill right here. It's pretty sandy, it's pretty rutted. Let's see how it does. It's in X-Drive mode, so let's go. It 
it's doing all right. Turn that way a little bit. Turn to the right. Or maybe take a run at it. <laughs> Power. Nice. That's a lot of dust. More power. Yeah, it's just a little rock behind that wheel. Getting caught up on it. Struggled a bit, but what am I doing on these rocks made it. Right You're fine. All right, we made it. All right, back down the hill, testing out the hill descent control. And the hill descent's pretty good, too. It's working pretty good now. You can hear it. How are we doing? Good. All right, straight? Yep. Okay. Yeah, you're all set right now. All right, cool. All right, a couple of hiccups on the way up, but not too bad. It's not a Wrangler. It's not a, not a Tacoma TRD Pro, but it's pretty decent. All right, so what do we think? Well, I really like Outbacks. I mean, I have an Outback myself. It's lasted for 150,000 miles and it's still going strong. So yes, I'm a little biased, but I do like this one. I like the fact that it's got an increased ground clearance. You can have a little bit more fun. You can avoid obstacles that may scrape the bottom of the standard model. Is it worth it? Well, it's close to $40,000, but you could pay that for a full spec one anyway. I think I would go for this. I really do like how it drives. I feel like it's no slower than the other model. In fact, it feels like it's a little zippier. Uh, they changed some of the ratios on the transmission. So I feel like it might be a little zippier from zero to 60 than the standard model, but that's not what it's for. It is such a great utility vehicle. Um, I don't know why you'd want uh, a sort of taller riding SUV. I mean, it's a wagon. Wagons are pretty rare in the US these days. I love this car. The only downside that I can see for this car is the CVT. It's not perfect. I wish they tune it a little bit more uh, to be more like an eight-speed transmission, but I would happily live with this car without a problem. And you know it's going to be rock solid too. Uh, going to be driving it for many, many years to come. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone. Please subscribe, like, make a comment. Let me know what you think of this, whether the wilderness is a good step for Subaru to take, and I'll see you next time.